Welcome to Mimika TV. I'm your host, Mimika Cooney. I'm honored to be with you on this journey towards empowering you to succeed in faith, leadership, and business. That we understand that everything matters because representing God's kingdom means that anywhere where we are demonstrating God in our life, and that doesn't mean like it looks super spiritual. It just means that the Holy Spirit is flowing through us. What we're doing is evidence of God's power, His love, His compassion, His justice, His kindness, His provision. All of those things are wrapped up in having a kingdom mindset. And so when we do business from that mindset, we're pursuing the kingdom. All these things will be added to us. Welcome to Mimika TV. I'm your host, Mimika Cooney. Today, we're talking about how identity is your launch pad for clarity. Stevie Knight is the founder of Seven Spheres Media. She helps equip kingdom-minded believers and their companies for influence and impact in the marketplace and serving them through speaking, training, and consulting. Having experienced her own journey through divorce, financial loss, and cancer, Stevie has been contending for everything that's been stolen from believers, from ignorance, immaturity, bad choices, trauma, and head-on spiritual warfare. She loves sharing about faith, business, and entrepreneurship, personal transformation, and leveraging the power of social media and emerging technologies. So welcome, Stevie. So glad to have you on the show today. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah, well, I tell you, I've been stalking online. Like I always like to find my guests to think, oh, what are they doing? And I kind of see the wording that pops up and the things that you're doing. And I'm like, you are definitely my, my cup of tea. I need to ha have a chat with you. <laughs> so I appreciate you being on. And I know that you, before we started recording, you were saying how you went through a recent um, sort of, I don't know, rebrand, regrouping. This is what God does, right? Especially when you have uh, God at the center of your life and your business, he likes to do these things. But along the way, you know, as seasons and assignments change, sometimes we can get a little confused about what we're meant to be doing today. Um, so what we're really going to dig into is how to help you find that clarity. And Stevie is going to help you unpack that. But before we do that, give our audience a little bit of a backstory about how you got doing what you're doing today. Well, it's, uh, I think like most stories, you know, the, it, it, it kind of takes so many uh, turns in the road to finally figure out what you're meant to do. And um, I've been homes a homeschooling mom for 25, uh, 27 years. And now my youngest kid is 16. And I think uh, as moms, we realize that the education, the mentoring that we do with our children really never ends. So it's not like there's ever any real graduation from the school of mom or from the school of parenting, but there are shifts in, in life and big transitions. And even as a mom, I've always been fascinated with marketing. As a little kid, I was an entrepreneur. I think my, my first uh, business was selling popcorn. I was a missionary kid. I was born and raised in France. And I would sell popcorn to the kids at school. I would take orders the day before and I'd make the popcorn that night and bring it to school until the local baker uh, put in a complaint with the city that I had a, was running a business without a license. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that entrepreneurial I got shut story, down but... as a kid. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How's that to crush a dream? So I know, I know, but that was not going to stop me. So I did a lot of other things and I, I was just hit by the entrepreneurial bug. I think it's kind of in my DNA and I, I loved the competition. I loved, um, I loved try the, the challenge of sales and over the years, you know, I went through ups and downs. There were times when I really hated sales because sometimes I was taught to do things I was really uncomfortable with that didn't feel very honoring to the people I was trying to sell to. And so I kind of had to take a step back and go, hmm, okay, I'm going to take from this and those are the things I'm not going to go with. And so there's just a journey as an entrepreneur that you go through of, you know, chewing the, chewing the meat and spitting out the bones, whether, it, whether it's from your own experiences or mentors or books or podcasts, things that you listen to. And so those things have truly impacted me. And in the last, I'd say, maybe 10 years, I got really much more involved in marketing and speaking and doing different, different things, especially online, because I was so fascinated with the fact that, that I could go from being a consumer of information to a producer of information. And the influence that came with that and the impact, and of course, also the sales that came with that, 
was um, really, really life life changing. It, it uh, I was I was amazed that it was possible that I could be one of those people that knew uh, knew how to how to influence people in a way that would make them make buying decisions, even if that meant just selling them on an idea. Like today, we're, we're really what we're selling is ideas. We're selling people on themselves and we're selling them on the ability to change and, and have hope. So that's the best, the best kind of thing you can be selling. But um, it's been an extraordinary journey and I'm super excited to be here through all the changes. Well, that's what's fun, right, about being an entrepreneur, just like you have been an entrepreneur since I was 16. I sold chocolates, so you did the popcorn. Yeah. I did the chocolate thing. It was like totally the same problem. I got shut down because apparently they didn't have a license. Like, who does that? Anyways. Really? Yeah, exactly. How about why? Funny. But I think that's, as you said, like the entrepreneurial bug, um, it bites. And my parents were entrepreneurs. That's all I've ever known. I no, don't know what the inside of a cubicle looks like. I don't care to know. I like my freedom as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. But, of course, it comes with its own sort of caveats if you would say because sometimes you have to like learn in isolation there's things that you do especially when you are a a woman or a man of faith you know you have God as your business partner it's kind of changes the dynamics of what the business books what the MBA say you need to do right sometimes the numbers don't make sense and sometimes the the focus of where you're going and I'm sure you're the same way like you have an idea okay I'm gonna like I'm a strategist that's what I do for a job is strategize the steps but sometimes the steps don't make sense or perhaps we're missing the pieces or maybe we know we should be doing, but we don't want to do them or we procrastinating on something because we don't know what to do. So I think this idea of clarity is something that is so important. And we also, you mentioned earlier identity, like knowing who we are, what we can do helps us achieve it. So let's break that down a bit for everyone who's listening. If you felt like this, you know, you, you have an idea to do a business, a ministry, write a book, whatever it is that God's put on your heart to do, but you are kind of lacking the pieces like what is that clarity why does it seem like it's foggy how do we break it down into actionable tips that will help us sort of figure out what that is well I think the first thing is let me go back about 14 years ago I'd say um I we were involved in my my family was involved in a situation that had uh an incredible amount of unusual spiritual warfare through that process I started looking for answers uh, answers to a lot of different things, answers to uh, kind of some unusual things about spiritual warfare, but also about identity and who God calls us to be and the whole idea of of business and kingdom business. And 14 years ago, I was exposed to um, the teachings of a guy that really impacted my life. His name is Lance Wall now. And I don't know if you've heard of him, but he yes, teaches a I lot have. You have. Okay. So, and and I think people can look up on YouTube and look for his teaching. He's got one uh, about seven mountains it's called. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and he talks a lot about kingdom business. And really what you have to know is that it's not a new theology, but what it is, is really a new lens. It's a lens through which we look at our lives. And that lens really says that everything we do matters and that God doesn't have a hierarchy of meaning in that it's not the the pastors, the missionaries, the youth group leaders and all that who are somehow more important and somehow truly doing God's God's business. You know, they're not they're not the only ones who are sold out to God, because I think there's an idea or at least if you're kind of in in. Uh, maybe in the circles that I was raised in, is that if you're really sold out to God, then what you're going to do is you're going to go to Bible school, you're going to go get that kind of, you know, theological training, and then you're going to go out and be a quote-unquote full-time missionary, pastor, whatever. And, uh, but I found myself, and here I am, you know, here I was a missionary kid, I found myself, I never actually even considered being a missionary. When I was about five years old, I felt like God called me to certain things, more like to preaching and leadership. And these were all things that women in our denomination did not do. At least godly women did not do those things, right? So the fact is that your identity and your purpose can be stolen even by very well-meaning people. 
Because if we're not firmly grounded in the word of God and not just the traditions of men, we can miss really important things. And so for me, here I was a young, a young child, a young female child being told that the things that, or, or getting the idea, I, I didn't, it's not like I had this formal discussion, but getting the idea that the things that I felt drawn to, the, the things that made my heart sing, well, those weren't for me. So so then what are you going to do? So I spent many years kind of lost, kind of bumbling around. And it it actually took maybe 20 years of bumbling around uh, before I started heading in again in that direction that God had called me to. And now I kind of think of myself as a marketplace preacher. And I'm not always, you know, like, uh, you know, t- talking to people about spiritual things. But that's the lens through which... I look at life. It's the lens through which I look at business. It's a kingdom lens. And when I, when I heard about this whole idea of the seven mountains, that there are kind of like seven spheres of culture that influence um, everybody, you know, there's, there's media and entertainment, there's the business realm, there's a family realm. People have different ways of categorizing these seven mountains. And it's just a a great way to picture um, our life assignments. And those assignments can change and and we can kind of straddle several different spheres at the same time. But really there is an element of truth where that clarity of knowing where God has called you to in that particular season of life, that that helps you know what to focus on at what time. You were talking earlier about, you know, procrastination, you mentioned, and I think a lot of procrastination just comes because we're lacking in clarity. And so when I found out 14 years ago that it was okay that God made me this way, in fact, God wasn't apologizing that I was a woman. He, he was very glad that he made me a woman and that he called me to do uh, different things in the marketplace and to provide leadership and to train trainers and, and do those kinds of things. And, it, and the world opened up to me at that point. So it's kind of really, because it doesn't, it doesn't come with a, a blueprint, right? As you said, you know, right. most of us who think you're in ministry, if you go to Bible school and then you become a preacher, but that's not what God's saying. We are the body of Christ. All of us have skills and talents. And that, and I think this is always this tension between, I um, mean, you're not the only one. Like a lot of people I speak to who have a kingdom heart for business, but then also they have a heart for God, but they have a heart for business and they feel like the, the two never should meet. But I think that's exactly what God wants us to do is to pursue him in the marketplace. So then whether you're dealing with the client or you're dealing with um, anybody in any situation, you are ministering God. You are his ambassador, even in what we do. So clarity is something that I know I have struggled with for life, especially with the whole marrying the the faith with the business and how you present that, even if you're not in in ministry. How would you say and what what sort of tips could we give everybody that will help to chip away the confusion to really get down to those the steps of clarity because as you said once you have clarity you know what to do right i think first of all at least for me i'd say the whole issue of uh of a kingdom mindset is a biggie so taking the time to find out what that is you know reading books that talk about that um here's let me show you a couple that i that i recommend that that really help a lot to really have that perspective um But before I do that, to me, kingdom, a kingdom mindset just means that that we understand that everything matters because representing God's kingdom means that um, anywhere where we are demonstrating God in our life, and that doesn't mean like it looks super spiritual. It just means that the Holy Spirit is flowing through us and that, um, let's say, for example, um, in, our, in our business, uh, what we're doing is evidence of God's power, his love, his compassion, his justice, his kindness, his provision. All of those things are wrapped up in having a kingdom mindset. And so when we do business from that mindset, not, not just having a, a mindset that, well, I'm doing this for God. No, we're doing it from that position where we, we already know we're accepted. We already know we're loved. We already know we have purpose. And we, and we do everything we do from that position so that, uh, you know, we're doing like when, when, when Jesus said that, that, you know, if we're pursuing the kingdom, all these things will be added to us. If we come from that perspective and we're firmly rooted and grounded in a kingdom perspective, then everything we do comes from that. Then our identity gets clearer. When our identity gets clearer, then our actions get to be in alignment with our assignment. 
So it's really huge. Um, let me show you these three, three books in particular. Um, here's one called Change Agent by Oz Hillman. Um, I don't know if you're seeing it backwards or forward, but it's Change Agent by Oz Hillman. And the tagline is Engaging Your Passion to Be the One Who Makes a Difference. Excellent book. Good one. Um, another one that made a difference for me is Releasing Kings for Ministry in the Marketplace by John Garfield and Harold Everly. Um, also an excellent book. And again, this the whole point of this is that ministry is something we are doing all the time. It's not that we're doing business so we can minister. It's not that we're doing business so we can present the four spiritual laws or get people saved or, or, or whatever. Although those things are wonderful and sometimes God gives us those opportunities and it's important to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and, and know what part we were supposed to play in, in somebody else's spiritual journey. But the, but the thing that we do in itself is a sacred calling. So releasing kings for ministry in the marketplace is not saying, uh, you know, we want to be equipped so that we can then uh, convert everybody that we that we meet that's that's the holy spirit's job and we are to represent that king and the kingdom in everything we do so that's a good one then the the last one i'll share right now is called anointed for business it's by ed silboso who is another uh really big thought leader in this um uh, other than uh, lance well no i well now i think those are probably four of the top people that i recommend that people study and and again i think if we if we don't discount the importance of mindset as the fuel for our actions, then we take the time. We take the time to have our mind renewed. We take the time to make sure we're rooted and grounded in the word. We take the time to do those things so that our mind can be transformed so that as we get clarity on our identity and who God's called us to be in the marketplace, at home, everywhere we are, there's a, there's a level of integrity that flows in everything we do. Definitely. I mean, can't, like, I'm busy here cheering and smiling. You're like, yay! Yeah. <laughs> exactly what I, I, I really believe in. And I think we have to equip ourselves. And you mentioned a really important book, word, which is the title of one of my books, which is Mindset. Because mm -hmm. I know, I'm sure you've had the same situation. I've dealt with clients and coaching clients and consulting clients that they come to me with a business problem that they want me to fix as a consultant. But what I realize is business problems our personal problems in disguise. If they haven't got over the junk in their trunk and they haven't de gone through the detox of their childhood or past failures or finding their identity, because as you said, identity is key in knowing who you are, that we are God's children. And by knowing that, when we know when we come up against challenges or failures, it's okay. It's, it's just a do-over. We get to do it again. So really, you, that mindset is super key. So what would be another tip you could say? So we know we've mentioned the clarity and understanding, you know, our identity. What other thing would you say is, is key to this process? So first of all, fighting for the mindset and putting the time in. And then secondly, once you've, you've done that to really start, um, working with God, partnering with God to find out what does that look like in your life? What, what direction? And I don't mean necessarily a five or 10 year direction. And, and I think the five or 10 year direction is great. Those are wonderful things. Some of us get that earlier in life than others. Some of us never get that. And I think that's okay. I think that um, we need to be okay with the fact that sometimes God doesn't show you the whole staircase or the whole journey, but he shows you the next step. So I think that when we're going to take these these concepts that we're that you know that we're trying to to allow the the Holy Spirit to to change our minds to start uh, transforming us into kingdom minded entrepreneurs and business owners, then we start the journey of saying, okay, how is that going to work out in my life? And and to me, it means taking the time to write these things down and say, okay. Um, for practically speaking, I, some people really know what God has called them to. And so, I, you know, to those people, I say, okay, great. You've got it. You've got the concept. You know, you know who you are. You know what you're called to do. And you know from what position you're going to do it. But for a lot of us, I think you have to sit down and say, okay, what is it that stirs me up? What, how has God wired me? Um, to be really stirred up against or for something that I see in life. Like for me, when I first found out about this whole kingdom business mindset, I came from um, 
a family that was really, really poor, okay? When I say that we went skiing in Switzerland, okay, because I lived in France, right? But we went skiing in Switzerland, and it sounds really great, but <laughs> what that meant was um, there was a, a beautiful little town in Switzerland where some of the most expensive watches in the world are made. It's a, a little town called the Coast of the Fairies in Switzerland. And it's this beautiful, picturesque, small town. And the, the owners of the, the Piaget family, uh, the Piaget watches, um, had little places that they would allow missionaries and pastors to stay in for free for a week or two at a time. And so we would go. So this was provided to us, these beautiful accommodations in this beautiful little picturesque village. And we would go there and, you know, go down to the village to get our, you know, the bread and all that stuff. A very, very simple vacation. And our, you know, our skiing was, well, the local farmer would let us, you know, borrow their, their kids' skis and we'd trudge up the hill you know, a little hill and then go down on our skis. That was skiing in Switzerland for us. It was, you know, some great um, Alpine, uh, you know, three-star, four-star vacation. It, it was little things like that. But, and, and it was wonderful for us. And as a young kid, I really didn't feel poor. But I saw in the rearview mirror that we really did have a poverty mindset and we didn't know what we didn't know. And so we had really low expectations. Low expectations are killer to dreams. If you're an entrepreneur, if God has called you to be an entrepreneur, low expectations and being satisfied, um, you know, you think it's godly, uh, but being satisfied with uh, mediocrity is not is not a good thing. It kind of goes back to the parable of the talents, you know, where the master gave, uh, you know, 10, five and 10, five and, and two and one talents. I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, the two who were faithful multiplied what he was, what he gave them. They risked, they invested, they did something. The other one, you know, hid it. He hoarded it because he was afraid of losing it. And I think a lot of it have been, a lot of us have been kind of raised with a hoarding mentality without, without knowing it. It's, we're so afraid of loss. We've had so little often and we're so afraid of loss. And we're also so afraid of gain because we're, we're, we're afraid of, of the spirit of mammon. We're afraid of greed. And so we're, we're always going forward with, with one step on the accelerator and one step on the, on the brakes, I think, you know, kind of. So if so there's we, if, a tension, right? There's always like a tension. Right. You know. There's that tension. So I think if we'll sit down and, and think about these issues of a kingdom mindset and, and poverty and lack, and what is it that God has called us to do, write down the things that, that really get you riled up. For me, the, the example I was giving was specifically because part of what riles me up is this religious mindset that says poverty is almost a good thing. And I think biblically we see that poverty is a curse. We are supposed to be helping the poor. We are not supposed to be being the poor. And so as long as we're stuck in that mindset where when we're afraid of money, we're afraid of success, we're always going to be holding back. And I think the devil loves that because we're just completely ineffective, you know? And so, uh, so for me, that's one of my issues. So what is, what is it that when you sit down and you think about, you know, what are the things that get you riled up that, that make you, you know, rail against injustice, you know, what, what bothers you? Well, that's a clue to me. That's a clue often to what God has called us to do. So my whole thing in, in my life is not, you know, just uh, talking about money and prosperity and breaking off the poverty spirit, but it's, it's also equipping believers for influence in the marketplace. Because one of the things that I saw when I was in these meetings 14 years ago is that, um, you know, people were talking about, okay, we don't need to have a poverty spirit. It's not bad to pursue excellence in the marketplace and, and give value and, you know, trade uh, value for dollars and have uh, 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 prosperity and abundance reflected truly in our lives. Those are good things. But there was very little equipping out there to do that, you know. And I think your podcast is one of those tools that God is raising up. You and people like you, it, is that's part of God's plan to raise up people to uh, to be active for uh, for for God to really be able to bless us. I don't know if you you've heard the verses 
preached in some circles where you know the wealth of the wicked is is yeah, reserved for the righteous. For the righteous okay, yes. but but here's the, the 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 thing that is true, but often the way it's applied is almost like a lottery mentality that if we just sit around and pray, that all of a sudden it's going to show up in your mailbox and. I'm all for miracles. I think it's wonderful. But the reality is God has set up this world so that most of the time we reap what we sow. And so therefore, most of the time when we have lack in our lives, it's because we have sown somehow lack in our lives. So we need to go back and look at those things. And so when you when you sit down and write and, and see, okay, what has God wired me for so that I will be the solution to somebody's problem? And when you sit down and write those things down, I think God can bring you a lot of clarity, not only about your identity, but also what you're called called to do as living out that identity. Exactly. I mean, that is, I'm, I'm just smiling from ear to ear because that's exactly what God's been speaking to me in my heart. I'm like, I have about 20 different podcasts topics that are, speak to this. And you're the third person this week that we've talked about the tar- parable of the talents. And I can't emphasize this as much because somebody said to me, this other week, um, cause I, I, I've been doing some training about how to build your platform. I'm like, well, if God wants to build, wants me to be out there and wants me to share my message, he'll do it for me. I'm just going to mm-hmm. sit here and wait. I'm sorry. That's not what God says. And we're going back to your point about the parable, the talents. I love that as well. I use that all the time. What we forgot to mention is what did the, 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 the master say to the, the, the servant? He called yeah. him a wicked, yeah. lazy yeah. servant. And that's basically what it is. If you don't use the talents, the tools, the skills God gives you, he will take them away and give them to the person who is multiplying. So often I think there's that comparison thing that we think, oh, well, so-and-so is doing so well. It's not fair and they're lucky. It's not about luck. It's about obedience. And it's about finding, as you said, what God wants to do for you and stepping it out. So that's like so awesome. Cause I think once we have that clarity, it brings a lot of peace mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say then you know, you, you're not then pulled by and tossed by the waves and thinking, well, this one's doing this business idea, so I need to do that because they're making money. If we know it's what God wants for us, we were equipped for that. Right. And, and you know, when you when uh, the Lord really used the parable of the talents to convict me um, because I felt like uh, I, I, I really see in myself uh, – I I feel really blessed because I I think that I have experienced personally a lot of the things that I see the body struggling with in general. Whoops, something fell there. Um, I I really struggled with this this whole idea of um, if if it's going to be, God's going to do it for me. And there's a tension between, you know, this idea of if it's going to be, it's up to me. And this whole idea of, well, God's going to do it. There's, it's somewhere in the middle where we partner with God to accomplish things, to move forward. And God really convicted me that, that I was doing actually what the wicked servant was doing. And it wasn't just that I was hoarding my talent. It's also the accusation that I was making against God. Because if you look at that story, what he says is, I knew that you were a hard master and that you reap where you did not sow. That that kind of is this attitude of this chip on your shoulder about God, that God just uses people. You know, that's kind of this attitude that God is hard and he uses people. And God used that passage to convict me, along with the passage in Hebrews where he says um, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we must not not only believe that. Um, what has it go? Shoot. Um, do, you, do you remember that passage? Yes, yes. It says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. So I was believing, first of all. I was believing that, you know, he's a hard taskmaster. I have an expectation, a low expectation or an expectation. He's going to hit you over the back. Like, if you don't right. behave, I'm going to whoop right, you, right? Right, and, and even then, that I'm probably not going to succeed. Because after all, first of all, God doesn't really care about success. And, you know, money's not important. And success isn't as important. And all these crazy things that it kind of have been, uh, I've been brainwashed with. And, and it's not... It's not my parents' fault. It's not, it's, it's, I didn't go to the word. I didn't go and say, okay, what does the word have to say about this? Because I thought I knew. I thought, you know, I I heard the verse, you know, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Well, I knew that one really well. (laughs) So, you know, and so, and so the thing is about Hebrew thought or Jewish thought, however you think of it is that it, there's an ability to take two truths that seem contradictory and hold them equally in tension. 
You know, there's a verse in Proverbs that talks about don't answer a fool according to his folly. And then the next verse or the previous verse says, do answer a fool according to his folly. So you've got both of these that you take intention and it depends on the situation. It depends on the context and as to as to how you apply it. But God really convicted me that not only did I see him as a hard taskmaster, but I really didn't believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently pursue him. Yeah, and I think that that is, it's a whole, I don't know if it's from past, you know, training or the, the, the whole anti, um, well, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years ago was that, you know, you, you have to work hard and poverty is is glorified as if, you know, being humble and, and, and poor is actually more holy than being successful and almost like a disdain towards success. And then yes. we had the prosperity gospel that came out, kind of the name it and claim it. And if you just said it, it would be so, but I don't think God ha- is in either of those. Right. I think God is very clear. Like we say in the, in the parable of the talents, he gives us all according to our abilities. Like some might have one, some might have 10, but the more he gives you, the more responsibility he we have with them to, to expect to do more with them. Right. So I think it is very important that we do clarify. And sometimes I wouldn't you say a good thing would be to ask yourself, what do you actually believe? Right. Cause there might be some ingrained limiting beliefs that you've thought of or you've believed from maybe as that, Says as a child, like living as a uh, as a missionary child, I'm sure you know being poor and not having money was almost same seemed like you were doing God's work, right? Right. In fact, it's a lot of work. (laughs) Right. And when we saw other people like buying a home, buying insurance, preparing for for retirement or something like that, um, and I'm not convinced retirement is a great idea. I think it's a good time to be refired. But there is nothing wrong with planning for the future and, and you know, having investments that can then support you down the road so that you're free to pursue other things that God has, has put on your heart in the next season of life. That's a great thing. But, it, you know, like you said, when we, when we look at, when we really examine our, our, you know, what is my heart, I would say when I was younger, I, if I had sat down and looked at my heart, I don't know that I would have uncovered these things, but if I look at my results, that's how, and my actions, I think that's sometimes how you realize what you believe. Because in my head, I wouldn't have said that I think it's okay to be poor, okay? But in my heart, somehow there's some way that I'm acting out of my heart that is in alignment with poverty. And when we are in alignment with poverty, that's what we're going to, you know, we're going to be in agreement with that spirit. We're going to be in agreement with that. And our activities, our actions are going to be, uh, are going to be on the same page as that. And then we're going to get the, the, those results. And I think, so sometimes when we sit down and we don't know, you know, we're confused, well, what do I think about this? Or what do I think about that? I think a lot of us really haven't spent much thought looking at, you know, spent much time looking at those things. But if you look at the results in your life, if you look at the challenges that you have in your life and then start reading books like these. Um, and then let me see, I have to, oh, some other books. Um, and specifically on this topic, when we talk about money, uh, let me give you uh, a few books. Is this a good time for me? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because I, I love I, books. I'm like, you know, that's one yeah. of the things, how we learn is that we only, as you said, and this is it's something I say to my kids all the time, you don't know what you don't know. So stop trying right. to be smart Alec, you think that you know everything because you don't know until someone reveals it to you. And I think we also have to have, even though we are leaders and we are leading other people, we still have to have a teachable spirit that, okay, God, what's up with this? Like, why? You need to think about what you're thinking about. And, you know, for for years, I mean, even for 15 years, the first 15 years of running my business, I would keep, as you said, there's these habits, the fruit that keeps showing up. You know, you get so far in your business and, you know, you feel like you're getting pulled back again and you're starting from scratch or you feel like you get so far and and then uh, the mission gets aborted and you don't get the, the fruition of all your efforts. And you're like, what is that? And I think there are a few layers and then we could go into this mm-hmm. forever. Like you mentioned, there's definitely a, there's a familial generational thing that could be generational curses. It could be sure. old mindsets from the way you were raised. Right. Um, but understanding this point of view and, and seeing and having, you know, reading other people's books. And, and also, wouldn't you say maybe like I find journaling really helps. Like if I'm actually just like do a dear diary. And sometimes I think, do you really think like that? Like, do you, would you really speak to you other people the way you speak to yourself? 
Um, right. And, right. And I think if you're if you're journaling, maybe as you're reading or writing in your books, you'll see, you know, I'm going to show you these books. You can see that I've got all these markers in them. A lot of them, the pages are turned or they're highlighted or whatever. These are workbooks to me. And so if you can journal at the same time, sometimes I'll see in the margins, I've got an exclamation mark because I think it's really cool or a light bulb little symbol or a question mark. I really disagree with that. And, and, and so that these things help prompt you it's not that everything I read I always agree with it but it prompts that thinking to go okay God Holy Spirit would you uncover what in me is not in alignment with the way you see things and I find these books and the evidence that I see in the author's lives um, super helpful in uncovering those areas where God needs to work with me. So, for example, here's, uh, here's one called um, Secrets of the Kingdom Economy, How You Can Flourish in God's Economy by Paul Cooney. Uh, Keys to Heaven's Economy, and then uh, this is an angelic visitation from the Minister of Finance. Uh, by Sean Bolts. And so Sean Bolts is a little bit out there. And, but, you know, I think that it's certainly interesting to, to read about his experiences and, and, and the, th the encounters, the angelic encounters that he had. And so it may or may not be somebody's cup of tea, but it's worth reading. These are not um, absolutely crazy people. They're just people who, who've had experiences kind of outside of the norm. Uh, this is another really good one. Uh, Fixing the Money Thing by Gary Cassie. Phenomenal book. I love what he says. He he talks about um, where there is no provision, there is no vision. He says you need provision for your vision. So this idea that somehow we can accomplish what God wants us to accomplish without addressing the money thing, um, it's it's an illusion. It's it's absolutely not true. It goes completely against the laws of stewardship and reaping and sowing. Exactly. Um, here's the one I'm reading right now. It's called Poverty, Riches, and Wealth by Chris Valatin. He gets a lot of hate mail for being a prosperity teacher, but he's actually really balanced. Uh, the tagline is moving from a life of lack into true kingdom abundance. And it's excellent. It's the one that I'm really studying right now. So to me, if, you know, from a practical standpoint, you know, look at these different issues of identity, of kingdom mindset, of, you know, what we believe about money and success. And, you know, read these books, journal, write these things down. Um, if you're confused about what you're called to, write down the things that, that make you really mad or the things that make your heart sing. Because somewhere in that is a revelation for this next season. It might not be the thing that you're going to be doing five years, ten years down the road. But it might be the thing that you need to do now in order to get to the next thing. And God uses all these processes. I know I can tend to really overthink things. I want to know how it's going to be. How and, and why and what's and when and paint by numbers right, and all that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I'm very strategic. So I love to know, you know, I want to know the path. And yet... Most of the time, honestly, God has not allowed me to see very far ahead. It's really funny. God has, you know, um, revealed some things about, about where I'm going. And I'm really thankful for that because sometimes it gives you courage to step in that direction. But we don't always get that at every season of our life, you know. So um, I, I think that when we hear people's stories, when we read these books, when we sit down and journal and, and pray over these issues, the Holy Spirit can stir these things up and tell you, okay, this is the next area that you need to be working on. Uh, you know, one of the issues for me was um, I don't like to look unprofessional. I don't like to look unpolished. I want to, you know, provide good value. I want when somebody sees me, I want them to go, oh, good. This person, you know, she knows what she's talking about. She's got great value and blah, blah, blah. Right. OK, well, I have been I have been sick for about four, four and a half years. Right. Or I got sick about four and a half years ago. And so I, you know, have been able to do things off and on, uh, but mostly off for the last four and a half years. And so here I am again. The Lord has opened up doors for me. I'm back on track. My health is, has improved dramatically. And so I'm able to do certain things. But the reality is I'm not where I'm going to be five years from now. And I honestly would like to practice everything in, in private. I would like to practice everything in private 
private until I get good and then show up, okay? And so the other day I was doing a Facebook Live. I started doing my Facebook Lives uh, the other day in preparation for a launch that I'm doing. And so, you know, the and I've done lots of Facebook Lives in the past and I, I have enjoyed them. I'm generally fairly comfortable, but it's been, I was looking at it almost two years since I did them regularly. So I'm having to just jump back in and you can't, go through the, the the process of broadcasting live without actually broadcasting live. It's a completely different yeah. dynamic. I just have to but, do it. Right, exactly. So, you know, the other day, what was it, two, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was in a place where my internet connection wasn't very good and I thought it was going to be good enough, but it wasn't good enough. And, you know, so I was doing my Facebook live and, it, you know, it was eight minutes long and, and, um, and I just had to redo it. And even when I redid it later, I did it worse, honestly. I think I did a worse job. Well, that's the thing with live. You just got to go with it because it's con- right. conversing. It's not like now where we record exactly. kind of perfection. But I think that's yeah. the point is that God doesn't expect perfection. He just Right. He you just got to do it. It's obedience yeah. and surrender, yes. which for us, you yeah, know, exactly. control freaks, it can be a right. little hard because we want to be in control. Right. We want to be right. in um, taking the steps and knowing the action and have a pain fund numbers because then it, is, it gives us – comfort that we were relying on our own strength so that's the other one which we didn't we didn't talk about is all right. of that. but saying all of that we've covered so much content today if we had to wrap it all up what would you say would be one takeaway tip wrestle you know uh we, we didn't talk about it a whole lot but wrestle be willing to wrestle with god for your identity when you know who you are in christ it makes all the difference to be able to pursue what god has called you to do so i would say you know it, it can take it can take a long time and it's a continually evolving process to get more and more clarity. But I do think that to some degree we have defining moments like Jacob have when he had when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord, where he said, you know, I'm not going to let you go until you give me my name. And, and there was, you know, he was wrestling really for an identity and you see that he had a, a, a name change and we don't all have to go through a name change, but we all need an identity change because we need to get that, that clarity. Nobody's born in alignment with their assignment. Nobody's born with clarity on their identity. It's something that we go through. And so to me, it may, it may seem very, um, uh, philosophical, but to me, the practical, the practical step to do is to wrestle in your heart and in your mind with God for who he's called you to be. Definitely. And it's worth the effort. Like, and that's the thing is God says, if those who, who knock and seek me will find me, but we, it's the seeking that we forget, that we forget that we're not going to just sit here and then, oh, oh, opera moment, it just gets downloaded on us. We actually have to do the seeking, which is, you know, putting in the effort to actually find out what it is. Um, so, um, well, I know we've covered a, a ton of content today, but before we wrap up, would you mind praying for our audience and just giving them some activation? Absolutely. That sounds great. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for all the people that are going to be listening and watching to this later on. I thank you that you have uh, have called each person individually to the influence of this podcast because they are called to influence others. I thank you that you deposit great things in each one of us and that your Holy Spirit can leak out of us as we allow you to, to truly fill us. And so, Father, I pray for each woman, each man who's going to be watching or listening to this later, that they would truly know how much they are loved and what an important part they play in your kingdom. Father, I pray that you would encourage each mama, each papa, each entrepreneur, each business owner, each employee, each person that's going to be watching and listening to this and help them to be activated in the identity that you've called them for. Help them to know who they are. Father, I just speak life over every single one of them. Father, I I speak every false identity to fall off and their true identity to be revealed. Father, I pray that you would give them patience as you reveal kind of layer by layer who they are called to be and what they're called to do. Give them patience for the process, Father. Help them to be able to, to sustain the ongoing journey 
with you, Father, the, the, um, the necessary marathon mindset that it really takes, even with lots of sprints in the middle, Father, the, the marathon mindset it takes to contend for our destiny, to contend for our calling, to contend for our assignment and our identity, to truly pursue everything that you've called us to pursue and to help others do the same. So, Father, I just pray that as we close that you will use this podcast today and all of the, the other podcasts that Mamika has presented uh, and the, the other speakers that she'll be interviewing. Father, I pray that you would use this to bring a great harvest of wonderful kingdom ambassadors on earth today who are going to reflect your glory, your kingdom, your kindness, your love, your compassion, uh, your excellence in the marketplace. And I thank you for all this. I thank you for Mamika and everything that she's called to do. I thank you that you continue to equip her and bless her. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. I so appreciate that. Always having like praying for our audience and also praying for our, we just need to be, you know, willing hands. And that's what I, yeah. we say doing what we're doing here today, sharing stories, equipping those, those who hear us take the seeds of what we sowing into your life and run with it and sow it into other people's lives. I'm going to say yeah. thank you so much, Stevie, for all You're those wonderful welcome. insights. I really yeah. appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone wants to know, how can they get in touch with you? So tell us where's the best place to find you online? Well, right now they can um, they can go to, I just launched a new newsletter called the Kingdom Influence Connection. And the goal of that newsletter is really to, uh, to allow people to connect with uh, podcasts like yours and great, uh, you know, other great thought leaders, uh, books, courses, the best of the best out there to help people be equipped for, uh, for influence in the marketplace. So they can go for, to subscribe to that free newsletter. They can go to launch.kingdom influence.com so that's again launch.kingdominfluence.com and they can also connect with me on Facebook um, if your audience will uh, you know just fr- send me a friend request and also send me a private message I get a lot of requests and so if they'll let me know that they're part of your audience that will help give me context and I would love to connect with them um, and uh, and help continue to to serve them and equip them for whatever God has has called them to so have them connect with me on Facebook if you just go to facebook.com slash TV night, you'll find me really easily. That's perfect. Well, we'll have all these links as well in the show notes. So okay. if you're listening um, on audio or you're watching on on the website, um, just click below the video. You'll see the links all there. But if you've enjoyed what Stevie had to say today, make sure to share it with your friends. I'm sure you know someone who needs to hear these words of wisdom. Make sure to click those buttons and share a like. And then if you have any aha moments, revelations, any questions, make sure to add your comments. We love to keep the conversation going to make sure that, you know, you are gaining from what we're sharing here on the podcast and, you know, help stand um, in agreement with you. And then if you want more freebie resources that I only share with my newsletter community, go to mamikacuni.com and I have a bunch of digital downloads you can get including a copy of my book, Mindset Makeover, How to Renew Your Mind and Walk in God's Authority, which is great. We, we covered those topics as well, which is why it's key. Awesome. And as well as the digital bundle includes digital screensavers, if you want some inspiration of seeing scripture every day. So make sure and go there, uh, go to mamikacuni.com and get that today. I've got to say thanks so much, Stevie. We t- covered a ton of content, and I know my audience are going to love this. I'm definitely going to be putting this on repeat and making some notes because we those books as well, I'm not going to be ordering them i love listening on audible and then getting the yeah. copies and making it's so much fun it's so much fun so yeah and, and and people need to enjoy the journey it's a it's a great journey with god exactly and he's at the helm which makes it much easier we don't have to do this by ourselves that's the great right. news right well i'm gonna say thanks to everyone watching and listening and thanks stevie again for joining us today until next time take care are you ready to build a platform with a purpose Come to mamikacuni.com and download your free checklist, How to Build Your Platform in 30 Days.